The IKEA gaming chairs seem really compelling because of their super budget-friendly price points. As a matter of fact, you can pick up all three of their gaming chairs for less than the price of a single Herman Miller gaming chair. Also, with the exception of the Uta Spalata, which has that gaming bucket style design that so many people have come to dislike, their other two offerings have more typical office chair designs that seem more ergonomic. So we're going to see which one, if any, is worth the pickup. I've also picked up the IKEA Yarf Yelit, which is IKEA's most premium office chair offering, to see if you should pick up that one instead of their gaming chair lineup. Let's get honest. This here is the Huvud Spelare, this is the Ute Spelare, and this is the Match Spell. Now, I not, I'm not Swedish, and I couldn't find these pronunciations online. I did, did take four years of German, so I'm using that. I know they're not the same, but they're similar to hopefully I didn't butcher these names too bad. So the overarching feature that I like about these four chairs is that they use what they call self-locking casters. And what that means is if there's no weight on the chair, if you push it, the casters simply don't roll. As a matter of fact, when you move these chairs around, you may not be able to see it on camera, but the wheels are not rolling. Right now, it's just sliding on the hard surface, but it does take a little bit more pressure to get it to move around. As you can see, I'm pushing it, and you can see the chair is just barely moving. What benefit that has is that, let's say your chair is here and your desk is in front. Well, somebody bumps your chair, well, it's not gonna slam into the wall unless someone puts some serious pressure and pushes it backwards. Speaking about the casters, they're pretty much all the same. They're very small casters. They're not the quietest things in the world, but they get the job done. If you guys are liking this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below as to which chair you would or wouldn't buy as that really helps YouTube push this video out. And make sure you guys get subscribed because one, I try to answer any of your chair questions because on a small channel like this, you really matter to me, guys. And why would you subscribe to a large channel where you don't matter versus here, you matter. And the second reason is because I have a lot of other chair reviews coming. I have all three of the Herman Miller gaming chairs coming my way. The Capisco Hag is here, as you saw in my previous video. And the Hayworth Fern is also gonna be coming to my way in a few weeks. Make sure you get subscribed. Let's start with the Hoover Spilata. I really don't recommend this chair to anybody because it just has too much exposed metal. So if you sit all the way back, you will feel this metal bar from the backrest on your bottom and it does not feel good. And in addition to that, there's exposed metal on the head as well. Let me go ahead and bang these things for you so you can hear. And you guys can hear those things, right? They are very exposed and it's just not gonna feel good for anybody. This headrest, I'm five foot six, 176 pounds, and I can tell you if you look, it's hitting the bottom of my head or the bottom of my skull. So I would say about three or four inches down, you can still feel it on the top of your head. So yeah, even five foot two to five foot six, you're all gonna feel it. If you're taller, you're gonna feel that more on your neck and shoulder. So yeah, unfortunately, the Hoover Spilata is just a big no for me. Now, I'll go over some of the features, which there are hardly any, but yeah, I even though the price tag may look attractive guys really you should avoid this chair okay so starting from the bottom the casters use very circular caster legs so if you like to put your feet up you will slip off of these pretty easily it is metal though now moving up the only features that this chair has is that you can pull out the the little uh, thing here that adjusts the height you can pull that arm out and it allows you to tilt the chair and you don't get that much tilt here I'll turn this way you get about this much tilt and the IKEA website has a lot of specific specs if you guys want to look at that. And in addition to that, you get a giant knob on the bottom here where you're able to tighten or loosen the back tilt tension. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the Hoover Spilata. Again, don't recommend this for everyone. I'm going to push it out of the way so I have a little bit more room on camera for these chairs. Now moving to the Ute Spilata. So my friend Edmund, who was on my previous video, he's 5'10", he sat on this chair and he said of all the chairs, this was his preference. But this chair is still designed for relatively short people, but on the taller end of the short scale. So what I mean by that is, I think it's gonna be better for people who are about 5'9 to 5'11, no taller, no shorter. And the reason why is because me being 5'6, he liked these arms, because, or he liked this divot here, even though it's not as aggressive as you would see on other gaming chairs, he liked it because he felt like it gave him some sort of like arm, and his arms would kind of fit up here, as opposed to being down here like it is for me. So he liked it because it gave him a little bit more arm support, like his arms were able to hang out here a little bit nicely. But for me, being five or six, I, my, my triceps just bang into these arms. So yeah, that's why I think it's for slightly taller, shorter people. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know what tall is to you guys. Everybody has a different reference. But anyways, uh, let's start from the bottom and move our way up. So from the bottom, it's using these casters. And I'll tell you, of all these chairs, 
This one here, the Uta Spilare, is the biggest pain in the ass to assemble. For some reason, the legs don't come as a set piece of, you gotta screw multiple pieces into assemble the legs. So just keep in mind, this is the biggest pain in the ass to assemble. Even for an Ikea product, I thought it was such a pain. And they're rounded as well, so if you like to keep your legs up, they will slide off pretty easily. When it comes to the features, very, very limited features. Again, just like the Huvudspelada, you can do height adjustment with the knob on the right. You can pull it out, I think it's already out, and you can lean back like this, and you can push it in and it'll lock it. And if you have it loose, there is a tension knob right here that you can tighten or loosen to get a tighter or more loose rocking back and forth. And that's pretty much it on the bottom. Like I said, very, very limited feature set. Now the arms are static and the arms are pretty static and they're fairly low, which means for me being five foot six, again, just like the Hoover Chipolata, I have to really pull my arms down to get my whole forearm on these. It's not very comfortable. So yeah, these arms are just a little bit too low for someone like me. And if you're taller, you can definitely bet that they're gonna be too low for you, okay? So those are the armrests. The one good thing that it's got going for it for almost anybody who likes aggressive lumbar is that the way the seat is shaped it's not using a pad, instead it's using the molded plastic. It's a very aggressive lumbar bump here. So aggressive in fact that the material here actually doesn't touch the back on the above that because it's just jutting out so far that the material can't like adapt to it and it's not glued down. So you can see that there's a lot, a significant amount of space between the fabric and the black back plastic right after that giant lumbar bump. So it does give you aggressive lumbar. Again, I think this is gonna be ideal for people who are like 5'9 to 5'11, any taller than that and I don't think you're gonna feel comfortable in this chair. Also, the seat padding, while there are significantly more than on the Huvich Balada, you can still feel the hard bottom after a little bit, so just keep that in mind. But yeah, that's the Hoover Spilata in a nutshell. It's got soft lining all around the edges as well, except for here, you get more exposed or you can feel the metal on these legs. So curling your legs is gonna be out of the question. Instead, this is gonna be a little bit wider for you to be able to spread your legs out on or do leg over leg. But if you wanna curl it up, it's not gonna work, especially cause you've got these lines here on the arms as well as hard lining on the outside. Moving to the Mashbell. The Mashbell is definitely the most premium out of the gaming chairs but it's a really confused chair. So sitting on it, this chair is gonna fit comfortably for shorter people as well as people all the way up to about five foot 10, five foot 11. Now me being five foot six, my feet do touch the ground very comfortably, right, very securely. But the weird thing is that the seat depth is just very short. Like all these chairs seat depth is very short and it has no seat depth adjustability. It also has one of the best headrests, but there's a, a critical flaw in the headrest as well. But let's start from the bottom and work our way up. So starting from the legs, these are the first chair legs that are flat. They're very skinny, but they're flat. So if you like to put your feet on, they won't slip off if you got it kind of in the middle. So that I like that about this chair. Now the feature of this chair are super duper basic and very confusing. Not only do you have height adjustment, but you have the ability to pull the arm out and tilt the chair, and unlike those two chairs, you can actually push it in and lock the tilt in place. So you've got that feature as well, and that's it. And this is the part that confused me. There is no tilt tension knob like there is on the two super budget chairs. And I was really confused, I was like, why? Because the only chairs that don't have a tilt tension are the chairs that are self-adjusting, like the Human Scale Freedom, or I believe the Herman Miller Cosm is like this as well, where you can lean back and it really kind of adjusts to the tension you put on it. The steel case chairs also have this feature as well, where they'll kind of just like self-adjust to the tension you put on it. Now, while it is easier to lean back, you still have to put tension on your legs to hold that position. Like it's not gonna just stay there like it would on some of the other chairs uh, with very little tension. Like this, I find myself having to put a good amount of tension on my legs, which puts a lot of stress on my thighs here and it's just not a great feeling. So I'm like really confused. Why wouldn't they add tilt tension on this chair? Very weird, very confusing, but that's pretty much it in terms of the bottom chair features. The arms have an adjustment to go up or down, which is the first chair in this lineup that's able to do that, and they can slide forward and back, but that's pretty much it. All of the arms are very hard. They have no give. They're not soft whatsoever. They're hard plastic, and that's it, pretty much it for the arms. The seat depth, as I said, is very short. Now there's much more cushion and padding than on the Uta Spalada, so that is a big plus here. But that's kind of where it all ends because again, not only is it short, but 
There is no real lumbar support on this. As you can see, there's no pad, there's nothing here, there's just mesh. And so you're not getting a lot of lumbar support on this chair. And the frame here is basically the same frame that they use on the Huvudspelada, which means that you've got metal exposed all around the edges. So if you are taller than five foot 11, you're gonna feel this metal dig into your shoulders. As a matter of fact, if you're five foot 11, you might actually feel the metal dig into your shoulders. So you might wanna check it out or get ready to return this if you do start feeling that because it's very uncomfortable. The headrest here is one of the better headrest designs in terms of this headrest part, but terrible design otherwise because it can flex up and down. It can you know maneuver up, like flip forward and back. You can tilt forward and back and it's fairly flat and it's pretty far back, which means that you can lean back on it and as you can see here, I'm not, I don't feel my head pushing forward at all. It's really great placement. The critical flaw though, is that if you are taller than five foot seven and you're kind of sitting on top of the headrest, your head is on top of the headrest. Well, my friends have noticed that if they're leaning back and they, you guys, you guys see that? Like I'm short, so my head isn't on top of the headrest. But if you were taller and you lean back, do you see how easy it is to not, the, the latch on this is so loose that with one finger and barely any pressure, I can push it all the way down. And that is a critical flaw. It basically means that if you're on the taller end and you put your head on it, the headrest is just gonna start coming down and it's not gonna be in the position that you want. It's just too loose. Now, if you guys are looking for a budget chair, I don't recommend any of these. I really don't. As a matter of fact, I would instead recommend that you guys check out my other video, uh, which chair should you buy? I have recommendations for on the shorter end as well as on the taller end that are about the same price as these two chairs here. So yeah, if you guys are looking at budget chairs, buy those chairs instead. Please don't buy Ikea. I love Ikea, unfortunately. I just, I can't say a lot of good things about these chairs. They're just not. Yeah, I never found their chairs great and the, the trend continues here. So let's compare it to now their most expensive office chair, the Yarf Yelit. And I can tell you that the Yarf Yelit and the Matchbell are almost the same chair, except with a much worse headrest. So the Yarf Yelit here uses the same seat padding as this, uh, as the Matchbell here. It's the same thickness. It feels like the same depth. The one thing that the Yarf Yelit has that the Matchbell does not is that you're able to tilt this chair or you're able to push that depth out a little bit using the left bar here but it's a joke. But more than that, in just a minute, let's go from the bottom, work our way up. So the legs here are rounded once again. So if you wanna put your feet up, you will slide down if you're wearing socks. Moving up to the bottom features of this chair, on the left side, as I mentioned, you do get seat depth adjustment, but it is, <laughs> it is a total joke. You get literally one inch, like, I'm not kidding you. I think it's one inch of adjustment. So literally this much. That's literally all you get. There's no more. It's like, at that point, like, why would you even put it in? I, it's so ridiculous. Oh gosh, it just makes me so upset. On the right side here, you get the same height adjustment here. You can pull it out and you can lean back. And then same as the match bell, this is why I said they're very similar. If you push it in, it'll lock the chair in place. But just like the match bell, there is no tilt tension knob down here, which means that you are pretty much at the mercy of pushing yourself back with your thighs, putting a lot of tension in your thighs, and I don't love it. I really, really don't like that. I, I can't stress how much I don't like that. So yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to the bottom features. The arms are essentially the same. They're, they have a slightly more rounded front, and they're not as wide as the match bell arms, but they're essentially the same. They're hard plastic. They go up and down, and they slide forward and back. I will say that the arms on the Yarf Yelit, the left one especially, is super loose, and I did tighten all these screw bolts, so I don't know why that's happening, but yeah, this arm is super duper loose. The Lumbar on the Yarf Yelit is a little bit better though because they do have a pad back here versus the Mash Bell, which is just using mesh and nothing else. So it does have a pad, but I find it to be too high for me. So it's a little bit too high for my, my preferences. I much prefer the lower position on the, uh, uh, the Utush Balada. It feels good, a little bit too high, unfortunately for me. I prefer it to be a little bit more down and this is not adjustable, unfortunately. You can't can move it, so that's another ding on the chair. And then moving up, the frame is the exact same, pretty much. It's a little bit taller, you can tell, on the Yarf Yelit. Also, look at this chair wobble, it's ridiculous. Um, it's a little bit taller, but even then, it's still a hard 
metal surrounding. And yeah, you're gonna feel that on your shoulders or on your upper shoulders. You're gonna even feel it on your arms if you have particularly broad shoulders. And the headrest here is inferior compared to the Mach Bell because not only does it not swivel, but in addition, if you look at the positioning of it, the headrest not only starts in front of the backrest, but it's also very thick, which means that when you sit on the chair, you feel like the headrest is pushing your head forward, like it's not in a comfortable position. The only time you could really use this headrest is when you're leaned back. That's the only time it would feel comfortable. But yeah, if you're sitting up, it just gets in the way and you can't really do anything about it and it's just not a great headrest. One quick thing I didn't mention is that, oh God, oh man. These chairs, after you sit on it for a period of time and you stand up, it starts to do this like crunching, wrinkling, popping noise because it's kind of unfolding from all that pressure you just exerted on it. So something you should keep in mind. So yeah, unfortunately guys, I don't have a lot of good things to say about these IKEA chairs. I don't really recommend them for people. Uh, again, I'll leave a link down below to my video on which chair should you buy where I believe that the chairs that I recommend are gonna be far superior to any of these chairs. So check out that video instead, check out those chairs instead. Again, I love Ikea, I'm not an Ikea hater. I really do love Ikea. Like there is a couch right back there that is an Ikea couch that I love. And it was relatively, it was super cheap. And I, again, I can't stress how much I really like Ikea. Unfortunately with their chairs, I just think it's a huge miss, a huge missed opportunity, and I can't recommend them to anybody. If you've already picked one up, let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree with my assessment. Again, if your chair feels comfortable to you, that's really all that matters. So don't listen to anything I have to say if you like your chair. All right guys, that's gonna do it for this one. If you like this video, again, please give it a thumbs up, like it, uh, and leave a comment down below as that helps push this video out through the YouTube algorithm. Get subscribed for future chair reviews. Get subscribed if I've helped you with the comments, you know, if, uh, questions you have about the chairs. Until next time guys, stay safe, and as always, stay honest. Yeah.